And welcome to Hot Topics. Today we are chatting about something super exciting and that is the balance between life and work and how we have found this during lockdown and this time of COVID and the pandemic. My name is Ilza and I'm one of the hosts of Hot Topics and I'd like to have our co-host introduce themselves to you today. All right, um, it's Hyoni um, and I'll be with Elsa and Rebecca today. Look forward to the conversation. Hi, and I'm Rebecca, and I'm super excited to be speaking about this topic. Thanks so much, guys. So today we're chatting about this work-life balance. I don't know how you guys have experienced it, but especially during lockdown um, and this time of being inside, staying home to stay safe, it's been really interesting trying to balance life and trying to balance work. I think those of us that are able to do work from home, um, and we find ourselves trying to balance family, um, trying to balance chores and cooking and cleaning and all the things that we would normally do as part of our life um, and then all the things that come with work maybe you've got your colleagues your connectivity meetings and um, the work that you need to produce all these things and normally you would have a bit of a, a split and a divide where you leave your house to go to work and you kind of switch off a little bit that side of your life and then when you come home from work you switch off work um, and I've personally found that being at home and working from home, it's almost a sense of having to be online all the time because your connectivity is on a device, it's online. And so you just feel like you never get that break to relax. And it's been quite challenging to balance work and life. I don't know, have you guys experienced that? Look, I'll, um, I think from my side, yeah, my schedule has been um, thrown out. I'm never really sure when I'm chilling and when I am meant to be working uh, you know the one moment i'd be chilling and the next thing i know is i pick up my laptop to quickly just do something and it actually hit me on saturday that i haven't i literally haven't had a a day out of office you know i'm always thinking of something like the lines have been blurred with office coming into the home space um but i think it's also a great opportunity to kind of learn how to establish boundaries around that um, yeah, so I think a lot of boundaries have been blurred from my side um, in terms of family and also in terms of work and personal time. Um, I find that working at home doesn't mean that one has the amount of time they, that they thought they would have in their hands. Yeah. I think for me, it's quite difficult not to have some type of schedule to, well, there is like, you can make up your own sh schedule and stuff, but it's just way more lax. Like there's just way more um freedom and i'm someone that hates structure but desperately needs it in order to function just um, in order to be a functioning person a functioning part of a work group i need structure so that i can perform at the best that i can um so that's definitely been difficult for me to help with like self-control and doing stuff like that um so it's been quite a difficult time to find a routine and it's so easy to have excuses for that routine like for example we've been trying to go do exercise at eight o'clock every day but it's so easy like just to sleep a little bit longer or just to or or even like oh well, i'm now my new rules i'm not watching any tv in the day so at six o'clock am i watching tv because i could just find myself so easily starting a series starting a movie and then just not stopping so there's definitely this delicate fine line between work life chilled life and then overworking you know um because then you maybe compensate and like for me i'm a night owl so i like like working later but then i end up going to bed ridiculously late and be completely a wreck for the next morning yeah, I, I must say it's personally been like a challenge for me because I'm also like, I'm really someone who needs structure. Um, I enjoy structure. I know I irritate people sometimes because I'm such a structured person um, and not everyone is that way. But it's been interesting in this time trying to maintain structure. At the same time, you almost establish structure while needing to be flexible. And that's such a difficult um balance because it, it like Lenny mentioned it really interferes with your boundaries whereas before you're able to say cool this is the structure this is how my week looks um, and this is when i'm chilling this is when i'm working this is what i'm going to do life 
Um, but this time the, the boundaries haven't been so fixed and you kind of needed to be flexible. And so I don't know about you guys, but often when I'm, when I'm struggling with something, I look to scripture and I wonder, you know, what, what is scriptural? I try and relate a little bit of, um, you know, what is going on in my life? And was there ever a time in the Bible that I can find some um, understanding from? And something I thought about was um, this time where we find in Mark where Jesus actually had just found out that one, his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded, um, which is like a really super bad time. And you think, okay, this is a time where you need to put a boundary in place and say, wow, cool, stop. I'm going to go mourn. And then the second thing is he then sent out his disciples um, just to kind of give them this like trial run. And it's actually a cool, very, very cool account because you see how excited they come back and they want to tell Jesus about all the stuff that they did. And you see him um, almost taking a, wanting to take a break and put this boundary in place and say, we'll deal with ministry later. We'll deal with this later. Let's first go mourn. Let's first go rest. Let's go first seek God and seek God and rest. And then they go into the countryside and to go find this rest. And you see that Jesus sees these crowds that are gathering and following him. And instead of him putting that boundary in place and saying, stop, um, pause, this is my chill time. He actually, it says in scripture, he has compassion for them and he goes and he preaches to them. And this is where we have then the, the 5,000 people that get fed. And that's where we see the rest of the story. And I thought that's so interesting because it just speaks about those times where we have to put boundaries in place and it speaks about the importance of boundaries. But also, when do we, when is that time that we have to relax our boundaries a little bit in order to meet people where they're at? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting one, especially when you're going to look at it within the life of Jesus. Because you know, I, um, you know, also just um, thought of some situations where boundaries have been blurred. Um, you know, when you think of uh, a typical example is with the disciples, you know, um, just after Jesus spoken about divorce, I think it's in Matthew 19. Um, and then the disciples are like, she, this is difficult to follow. But then Jesus reaffirms the fact that because they've left their families and followed him, you know, um, and obviously, for most of them, this would have met with this, you know, this, a lot of them had left their businesses, a lot of them have left a um, normal life. Um, and that is actually affirmed. And, and, and so it got me in a very difficult situation. I was trying to establish, you know, what justifies maintaining my boundaries, you know, but also I realized something, you know, while thinking about that, that during times of crisis, we try to find a solution that will work for us at that particular moment. You know, we're not, it's not a normal time. It is not as though everything is as it is meant to be. All of us at the back of our minds are hoping that this will go away soon. And we are hoping that whatever we have in place to help us go through the season is a temporary um, setting. It's a temporary arrangement. Yeah. Oh. Like having blurred some boundaries, having messed up some boundaries, one thing I realized, just also even reflecting on the life of Jesus, is that boundaries ought always to be determined by our love for God, our love for self, and our love for others. You know, and I suppose the question isn't, what is this fixed structure that I'm going to hold on to no matter what is happening around me? I could say I'm a person who eats at eight o'clock and goes to gym at 10 o'clock. But if someone is dying between eight and 10, I'm not going to eat and go to gym. I'm going to help that person. And so at that moment, my boundaries are going to be disrupted. And even though my boundaries are disrupted, and even though it's important for me, to, or even I'm going to church at 10 o'clock, even though it's important for me to go to church at 10 o'clock, but I think the best form of worship at that particular moment is helping that person who is actually in need of my help at that particular moment brings us to the story of the great Samaritan. The priest does not break his boundary. The Levite does not break his boundary. But the one who breaks his boundary is the one that actually stops, even when it means helping someone who offends them greatly, someone whom they had an ethnic, ethnicity rival with. And so what I'm trying to get to is boundaries. One thing I've landed at for this particular season is that my boundaries should not be this fixed, frame that cannot be moved by what is happening around me because then I will miss it. Mm -hmm. But my boundaries are to 
adapt to the needs and to the needs of the season, to what needs to happen. And so my boundary right now, I need to say, okay, Shoni, this is what needs to happen. And therefore that's what you're going to adapt to in order to best worship God. And you know, yeah. Yeah. And I just think it's something that you said is that we're in, none of this is normal. We're in a new normal. There's no, it's almost like things that were before Corona. So like life that was before Corona. Now we're living in the Corona period of time. And it's so difficult to have an understanding of normal. Do you know what I mean? And I think this is a little bit about what we spoke about two weeks ago, where, where there is like a lot of comparison. There's a lot, like there's a lot of, um, seeing stuff on social media, seeing stuff um, all over the internet. And it's like, well, should this be my normal? Should this be where my boundary is broken? Should this be where I extend myself a little bit more, you know? And I think we live in such a consumeristic society where we just want to consume, consume, consume. And all of a sudden we've been forced to stop. All of a sudden we've been forced to stop consuming and we have to, there's this, there's this new normal that is not really normal, but it's becoming normal. Um, I was actually thinking to myself today, what are we going to do when we're out of this lockdown? What is the normal going to look like then? Because it can't look like what it looked like before we went into lockdown. And it definitely can't look like what we're going through now. So how do our boundaries, exactly like you say, instead of breaking, how do we bend them? How do we manipulate them to be Um, applicable to the time that we find ourselves in and I was reading um, in preparation for this about the Sabbath because I find myself very easily um, breaking the Sabbath because we're in lockdown and I think I honestly feel as though God is so explicit about a Sabbath he's so explicit about not working um, that it's actually quite a hard topic I, I can find it this morning when I was looking, but it's mentioned so many times in the Bible above other things, the, the importance of the Sabbath, above other things that we would deem important, the Sabbath is mentioned more. And I was looking at Hebrews 4, verses 9, where it says, There remains then a Sabbath, a rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest... God's rest also rest from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by, fl- by following the example of disobedience. So actually not having a Sabbath, not having a boundary with work, actually you find yourself in disobedience. You find yourself being disobedient to God. And it's actually quite a tough, I guess, realization to have because it's like, well, I'm not intentionally being disobedient. I'm not intentionally trying to um, turn from God um, in respect to the Sabbath. But your boundaries, or certainly my boundaries, are lacking with the Sabbath. My boundaries are lacking with work. My boundaries are lacking with family and and um, all that type of stuff. You know. So even when we have, we look at John the Baptist being beheaded and the mourning of Jesus, or the lack thereof, like the way that it's perceived, but it's boundaries are a very personal journey, the Sabbath and resting and all of that. It's all very personal. And um, yeah, so that's just kind of my thoughts along this work life balance. Um, And I think just one more thing that we are so in society, we may have made an idol out of being busy. We made an idol of, of making sure that, Um, If we look busy, we look successful. If we're busy, we are doing well at life. Um, And that's just not the truth, you know? And all of a sudden, we've been forced to stop. And, yeah. It's not only about looking successful. I think also sometimes our egos egos are fed by us. You know, suddenly it feels like, geez, man, I'm I'm a superhero, you know? I'm out here working more than everyone else around me. You know, and sometimes we need to check our insecurities and engage the stuff that makes us um, go on in an egotistic way. 
Absolutely. I love what both of you said. I think it's so relevant. And Rebecca, it's funny that you mentioned that about the Sabbath and, and the boundaries and that scripture that you were speaking about, the one that I found. Um, so just to clarify for everyone watching that the Sabbath was the day that Jesus put aside um, that God laid aside for us to rest. Um, and so in Mark 2 verse 27, um, there's a scripture that says, then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And now that's another scripture that challenges us. And I, I feel like it's almost a bridge between what both of you have said, that boundaries are important um, and that it is important to rest. But that this scripture almost bridges it for us to say that, yes, boundaries are important. Yes, rest is important. But there's times where, um, where our, our Sabbath needs to be disrupted because there's a different way that we need to worship God. So like you said, like if there's an essential need and someone's dying and we need to go pray for that person instead of going to pray in church as we would as part of normal work, normal worship that um, we're made for and that the Sabbath is made for us to serve our purposes and not um, the other way around. So that rest should serve us and not actually stress us out. Um, Something that I, I heard about a couple of years ago, and the person who told me this just blew my mind. Um, and they spoke about how the Israelites had to learn that their value was not in being busy. Just like you're saying in our society today, that it's almost like we feel affirmed. We feel like we're valuable as soon as we're busy. That the amount we can produce, the work we can do, makes us um, feel valuable. And so what this was about is that when the Israelites were in Egypt, their value as slaves lay on the amount of bricks that they could produce every day. It was literally day in, day out. They were forced by the slave drivers to produce bricks. The more bricks they produced, the more assurance they had of not um, being, uh, not uh, facing cruelty or not being um, persecuted at that time. And so, what then happened is as soon as they were taken out of um, Egypt into the desert, God had to teach them about the Sabbath. And that's where we find it um, in that account that the Sabbath is given to them to say, this is the day that you rest, that you are valuable even when you're not producing because they thought that their value lay on the work that they did, what they could do, how busy they looked. And God actually tells them that your value depends on, who you are and whose you, who's you are um, instead of what you can do. And that's something that I've found quite comforting in this time of balancing work and, and balancing life. Because I think in today's society, it's really easy to find that we are more valuable and to believe that we're more valuable to God when we're doing rather than being and resting. Um, and so maybe if you guys want to share your thoughts around how, um, you know, like some maybe some scriptures or why rest is important, how rest kind of leads us into worship, how rest is a, a way of worshiping, but also in rest that we find God. Look, I think for me, else, um, one of the things is you know, rest comes with trusting God. You know, when we struggle to trust God, you mm. know, um, and when we struggle to trust in the reality that life goes on without us we do not want to rest, you know? And there's also the issue of our own insecurities where I feel as though because I'm not busy, I do not have a sense of purpose at the moment. I'm just sitting around. My existence clearly does not matter. I am useless. Um, all those funny things we think about ourselves when we're not busy. You know, I think at times we need to engage those insecurities. Um, there's a real need for us to engage those insecurities. And also, we need to just, there's, there, there's something beautiful about the um, character of Jesus, where he's a messiah, but he rejects this notion of this extremist superhero who will do everything yeah. at that particular moment. He, he rejects it. You know, in the scripture you spoke about with the feeding of the 5,000, at some point, the people, the crowds wanted to take him and make him a king at that moment. And he went away from that place. You know, he, 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 he ran away from that situation. He avoided it, you know. Um, and I think then in Jesus' plan being unfolded through a greater community, Jesus then shows us how much um, right, doing right and wrong, or rather how much the work that needs to be done in this world belongs to a community rather than an individual. 
And I think the sooner we understand that, the better. You know, we are not superheroes. We have not been called to be busy at every hour. We need not be affirmed by the amount of boxes that we can tick in a day, but we need to do real work. And part of real work is learning to belong in a community that bows to God and that works at God's cue. I think it's also, just while we've been talking, I've just been thinking about people who have possibly um, lost their jobs or possibly have, are sitting in this time with nothing to do. And maybe if you're listening to this and you're not really relating to the busyness that we're speaking of, but I, there's a different type of busyness, I think. I think there's also busyness of wanting to just your mind and just everything you're thinking and everything you, you're forward thinking, you're, wonder, you're worrying about tomorrow, you're worrying about next week, um, you're worrying about when this quarantine is over, which is completely legitimate reasons to worry and legitimate stuff to be concerned about. And I guess there's nothing worse than someone saying to someone that, that oh, well, I've lost my job. I'm not, I'm not busy with the, what you would assume one would be, be busy with. But I think rest is allowing yourself to go into that sacred place, that holy place, that, that place where anxiety and, and worrying and fear you leave and you go into a place of solitude with God. And I don't know what that looks like for you. Um, for me, getting rest from anxiety or getting rest from stress, I suppose, as I retreat with my family. That's for me where I get energized from. That's from all baking with my gran or something like that. So I guess we're not necessarily saying that the busyness in the sense of work, the busyness in the sense of a nine to five job, which is also what we're speaking about, but it's also taking a break from the pressures of the world, whatever that may be, whether that is a nine to five job right now, whether that is worrying about pro providing, whether that is worrying about what this looks like in a few months time when you why well, if you still don't have work you know so it's it's not specifically about one area of busyness it's about the busyness of your mind i suppose and the busyness of your soul um getting getting burnt out or getting not not understanding boundaries you know um so i just wanted to encourage anyone who's listening to this and um so recently i was i, I was waitressing somewhere and we were all let go because obviously all the the restaurants were were done and I was fortunate enough to be able to find some other work but other people weren't and their number one stress is how they're going to provide the next meal for their family you know so it's not one type of busyness it's so many types of busyness and there's a book by John Mark Comer I don't remember I think it's called Ban the Busy um yeah I'm pretty there's also one by Jefferson Beth here and I get confused between the two titles. But John Mark Combe is about ban the busy and he looks at literally banning the busy in your life. Um, just as a book, maybe you could get on Amazon or, or something like that or on Kindle. But yeah, so, so that's just what I think. I think there's so many different types of busyness um, that we can be a slave to. And, and that's, not what, that's, not what God, that's not the life God calls us to. Definitely. And I think also not just around different types of busyness, but there's also different types of rest. Um, because I know for each of us, we feel like there's different ways that we're refueled. For me, I maybe don't feel refueled if I'm chilling, watching a series, watching a movie. For some people, it might be reading a book. But for some people, I've, I've often heard people say like the only way, and they look at scriptures and they say like, the only way to truly rest is to read scriptures. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes I, I read the scriptures and my mind goes a thousand different places because I'm a theology student, I'm busy studying, then I'm thinking about the work that I'm doing, I'm busy thinking about what I study, then suddenly, you know, and, and as much as reading scriptures and personal devotion time can lead me to rest, I often feel like it's not the only way that I can rest. Sometimes it's just switching your mind off. Um, and for other people, that's the only way they get refueled. So maybe you guys want to just share some ways that you've found um, some ways that you found helpful to refuel and to find rest and to find rest as in peace um, in God in different ways. Maybe you just want to share some of that. 
Look, I think just quickly uh, from mine as we, uh, you know, hit was closing is um, first thing is throw away what does not matter. You know, I think the first thing I personally did during this crisis is think of my life as a ship that is sinking in order to keep it on the water, above the waters, you need to throw out everything that does not matter. So that's the first thing I did. I need to be honest about my life. This matters, this does not matter. That's the first thing, you know. Um, and then number two, don't try to be too busy. I felt this yesterday where I felt like my mind and my energy was scattered all over the place and I could not give myself to one thing. And I just felt as though, man, it was like, I even noticed the one time when I was actually watching TV and I was in social media and I was trying to type something. And I was like, why am I doing so much at one time? I cannot even get value out of any of the three activities that I'm doing right now. And there is a sense in which we can do the same with our lives. You know, we can scatter ourselves trying to do so much that we do not get value out of all the things that we do that we're trying to do. And we sleep feeling so empty, you know, and it's not because the things that we're trying to do aren't important, but it's simply because we try to do everything at once. So two simple advice, advices from my side, throw away what does not matter, um, whether you find that through prayer or through reflection, but establish what matters and what doesn't. And then number two, um, do not scatter yourself. Have a simple plan, you know, and that's what's honestly helped me to keep focused and being able to rest while I do what I need to do. Yeah, I think I completely agree with Lonnie. It's all about what you're consuming, right? So you go on Instagram, you consume, and you go on Facebook, you're consuming. You go on whatever you, wherever you find yourself in, social, in the social media realm, um, and you find yourself consuming all this information, consuming all this knowledge. And it's like, how does that benefit me today? How does that benefit me and the position that I'm in right now? And it's all about quality over quantity. So it's about the quality of what you're consuming versus the quantity of what you're consuming. So I'm busy reading a book called Upward Falling by um, Richard Raw. And when I find myself tempted in the day to go watch TV, when I find myself tempted in the day to sit on social media, I turn to that instead. And I find like 20 minutes of doing that over watching an episode of Modern Family. It's just so much more fruitful for me and fruitful for the people around me. And it's so, yeah, so I think it's about the quality of what you're consuming rather than what you're consuming, if that makes sense. Because there's great things to consume. So like you, when it comes to eating or something, it's not bad to eat. You know what I mean? It's really good to eat vegetables. So that's a, so you can have as many veggies as you like versus if you're having like unhealthy, if you're having chocolate all day, like it's not, it's just the quality of what you're having. You know, an hour of reading a book versus an hour of watching TV, what is going to be more fruitful? But having said that, sorry, it's also okay to watch TV. It's also okay to be on social media. It's all like, don't be too hard on yourself. There are no rules for a pandemic. The only rules for a pandemic is don't go outside, you know, um, don't interact with people. So don't be too harsh on yourself either, but also just watch what you're consuming. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for sharing those tips. Those are really helpful. And I've definitely learned something out of that. And it's just always great hearing other people's ways of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe just in closing, I want to share just one more scripture um, with everyone. And that's something I've, I've often heard um, used in difficult times, difficult stages and stages of crisis in life. And that's where we find ourselves at the moment in a stage of life where we cannot maybe rationalize or understand or explain our way out of this one. Um, and that is just um, Ecclesiastes 3. It speaks about a time for everything. And the scripture just speaks about um, God's timing and that there's a time for everything, this balance and that God's timing is perfect. And so I'm just going to read that to us in closing. And then maybe, Rebecca, if I can ask you to close off and pray for us. Perfect. Thanks so much. All right, great. So um, Ecclesiastes 3 says a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for walk, for war and a time for peace. And so just have that assurance today that there is a time for everything, that it's not wrong to, um, to work or to, to worry or to stress and to think about these things, but that we must in that have the assurance that there is a time to rest and to go into God's presence and to feel his perfect peace. Amazing. Thanks, Elsa. Okay, so I'll just close us all for the quick prayer. Let's bow our heads. God, we just thank you so much that you're amongst us, that you are with us and that you, um, and that you call us, Father. I just pray that during this week that when we find ourselves in really busy situations, when we find ourselves unable to put up healthy boundaries or that we are able to turn to you and that we are able to acknowledge you and that we are able to, to hear your voice amongst the busyness, to hear your voice um, amongst the hustle and bustle of everything that's going on, God. I just pray that you draw us near to you, God, and that you help us and you enable us to find that quiet place, to find that solitude, to find that place that brings us joy and energy, Father, and that we find it easier to put up boundaries. We find it easier to, to turn to you um, in times of worry and stress. God, we just pray for those that are experiencing loss. We pray for those, whether that is a family member, whether that is a loss of um, income, God, we just pray that you are close to those who who are crying out to you, Father. So we just pray for this week, Lord, and we just pray that we just have intimate and amazing experiences of you. Pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Before we say bye, just to remind everyone that this isn't just a conversation that happens on a Sunday, but that we actually carry on this conversation and look at some scriptures and look at the Bible. And we have a Bible study on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And we'll be chatting a little bit deeper about this topic. And maybe if a Bible study is not your thing, but you want to get into contact with some like-minded people, we also have a WhatsApp chat group that you can also use and we'll put the link um, below for you to maybe just invite yourself and add yourself to that group if you want to chat in that way and then also just to remind you that this is not just us talking but we want to hear your voice your thoughts your comments and your questions around this so please send us a message um, you can email myself or Rebecca or Thorny um, and you can even send us a personal message if you don't want to put a public comment. But let's hear from you. Let's talk about this together. And let's really just find God's heart about this as a community of believers. So thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you again next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.